Hey, what's up, grinders? I am Azard, and this is your Gems of War Monday video with a twist. It's Wednesday. Yeah, life happens. And uh, I almost scratched this whole weekly video, but then again, I figured that maybe somebody gets something out of this, so I got nothing to lose. We have a Kazil week, and uh, the last Surrey pet is up for grabs for those who are interested with the Epic Trials. We also have a Demons in the Deep a world event running, and also we finally got Mist of Scales Legends Reborn event. This event has been in the spoilers for probably about a year or something, and yeah, we finally got this. And uh, we could check that out first. Uh, this is basically you are playing this Mist of Scale storyline over and over and over again. And uh, there's nothing that interesting, to be honest. You get some pets when you play it. And, um, well, there are some differences. Mainly that the old uh, Legends Reborn events were two weeks long. And this seems to be only seven days long. Um, there's a little bit of speculation going on in the community that um, we might see these Legends Reborn events little bit more frequently in the future and uh, when we go check these reward stages over here you can pretty much guess why that is yeah four books for 10 euros in my currency and here 12 more books for uh, 90 95 in euros but in order to get this you have to buy this as well so um for 50 bucks you get uh Quite a nice chunk of books, but then again, this is a proper middle finger for the free-to-play users, in my opinion. Um, they got the fiber from me. I really wanted this Taxagas worm pet, so I could level it up. And uh, this is the upcoming uh, monthly mythic-related pet. Taxaga will be a very good troop, so keep an eye on the Friday. Maybe I got some nice teams to show you on Friday. Right, but that's about it, about this Legends Reborn. Now we could go and check the world event. Mm, it's good old world event. There's no events captain. There isn't any uh, weapon in the tier shops either. Um, the metal boosts only spell damage for this event. And uh, you should probably should get these medals. Uh, first of all, they help with the spell damage. And then again... Uh, if you want to be a good guild member, you kind of want to buy tiers, tier, these tiers. About the uh, buy-in for this event, the total score needed for the guild to unlock all rewards is 126,000 points. So the average score per member in a full guild is 4,200 points. If we go check, for example, this PlayStation leaderboard over here, we can see that to get something close to that 402,000 you need pretty much of these battles so i can tell you that with tier 4 you usually get an average 94 battles and uh, tier 3 only gives you on average 81 battles so this is pretty much a tier 4 event in a perfect world when every guild member does exactly the same amount of scores right so tier 4 nets you some medals from these tokens. And of course you get some tokens from these rewards chases as well. The team, actually we could check the scoring quickly. Uh, this Nabazu over here is the worst, gives the worst score. Then there is two epic rarity battles. And uh, the um, Teraxis is the worst one of those. Then there is two legendary battles where Gorgotha and um, Glacian give exactly the same points and then there is the mythic battle against Obsidius that gives the most points. So all you gotta remember to follow the rarity of the battles and if you get two epic battles, don't pick Teraxis, if I remember right. Let's try the team against this mm, Nabasu over here. So I'm using Gorgotha up top. Uh, granite skin trait reduces damage from skulls by 75%. That's really nice uh, trait, to be honest. And then um, this troop explodes magical three gems and cleanses himself. 
pretty much using this as a tank and a mana generator. Then we are using Rock Troll, who doubles the number of brown gems on the board and then creates three brown gems more. Mm, trades. Knockout inflicts sun when doing skull damage. Well, this could help if you lose Gorgotha up top. Immunity Devourer and Stone Skin reduce damage from skulls by 50%. Again, if you have to use Rock Troll up top, if you lose Gorgotha, those are going to help. We're using the Empress, who gives magic plus 1 to all skills on the uh, last ally. And there is 7% chance for an extra turn for each green gem on the board. Pretty uh, popular troop. And uh, meddling this troop gives a little bit more of those um, stat points uh, to your last ally. Mm, good turret grants a random status effect to a random ally when an ally casts a spell. That's a nice trade. Helps with the survivability or mm, can speed up the killing process sometimes. Mm. And in the last slot we are using War and Peace. This is a Kha'Zile weapon, and this weapon deals magic amount damage to all enemies and gives two attacks to all allies. This weapon can be acquired by playing the Kha'Zile storyline through, I'm pretty sure about that. So if you don't own this weapon, this is available in the Soul Forge, but I wouldn't recommend crafting it because you are going to lose diamonds and other uh, loot. As, you, as I said, you can get this weapon by playing the storyline in Kha'Zile. So if you haven't done that, go ahead and do that. You should play the storylines, you know, anyway. That's the whole point of this game, I would say. <laughs> right. And we are using Titan Glass that gives all giant allies a 50% start. There's also a uh, Storm Aura that creates Dust Storm at the start of the battle. Rock Solid helps, Lightning Strike helps with the mana generation, and Fortitude always is a nice trait or talent to pick up from the tree. We're using Gorgotha to explode the board, Rock Troll to double up the brown gems that comes with the dust storm, and then we are casting Empress on our uh, War and Peace, and uh, we will deal pretty nice damage with this weapon, especially as we have those uh, medals equipped. Maybe we could quickly check War and Peace upgrades, because they are pretty nice too. <coughs> Excuse me. A Warden creates green gem, a card creates brown gem, Reaching deals 5 damage to the second enemy, and Peaceful silence the first enemy. This is pretty useful in um, certain battles, especially against uh, this uh, Nabasu. In most of my Nabasu fight, there was this one uh, construct troop that shuffled up your lineup, so it's pretty nice when you can silence that so it can't shuffle up your lineup. Right, let's go and try this team, shall we? All right, those medals there. I have a batch and a, a full medal as well. So let's hope for a great explosion. And that was pretty nice. We could take that, I think. Now we could... Um, we are going to actually take um, this. Then we boost our hero. Let's explode the board to get those browns on the board. Now we deal some damage. And they're gone. Right. Okay. That's about that battle. Now we get an Eldritch. Oh, it was this Petra Hulk actually that I was talking about. Um, gets some life. And then pulls an enemy to the front. So if they pull this war and peace up top, then we can't buff our hero anymore so that's a little bit annoying but we could silence that hopefully if we get a cast in before he gets a cast in all right let's go and try Eldritch minion is pretty annoying as well it converts brown gems away on the board so you really want to get those browns when they still are on the board now we buff our hero we get a cast in they're pretty nice and heavy damage 200 and something. Now we could double up the board. I think we got an extra turn. Yes, we take those and let's do another gust over there. Now we explode the board. Hopefully the dust turn does favors to us and it does indeed. And now we can do the final blow over there. Right, let's do one more. 
again against Eldritch minion that feeds Glacian over there. Right. I think this would go over pretty fine. Um, if you want some extra protection, you can always uh, slap Elementalist class on your hero. We don't have to worry about too much about those skulls. Again, even though the enemy has pretty high attack, they are going to deal very low damage to our Gorgotha. Let's do a cast over there. I think we are going to explode the board. Again, there is dust storm going on. Even though we don't have browns over there, we just explode the board and ta-da! Just massive blast of those brown gems. Another cast over there, and now, yeah. <laughs> um, weapon upgrade did the last job for us. Right, that is my world even team. Now let's go check under Spire. I'm using pretty much the same team over here, and uh, I need to count one, two, three, and uh, we want to go over here four. And pretty much the same team. However, because we don't have starting explosion or enchant or anything like that, I quite like to have Gimlet over here over using the Empress. Uh, we can convert uh, green gems to brown to feed Gorgotha, get more browns, and then hopefully double up those. And again, we are using War and Peace to deal that AOE damage over here. Uh, Submerge is a little bit of a problem, but we can always just spam the board, get a weapon up, let them do skull poke to our. Uh, Gorgotha, so that they lose the submerge and then deal that AoE damage with Worm Piece. Let's go and try this team. Do we have any conversion? We don't. We have an extra turn over there, which is pretty nice. And there as well. Now we are going to only 8. I don't like that. And we don't have an alignment with the conversion. And if we convert those greens, that's an extra turn. So I suppose we just take that skull poke over there. Okay, that helps a little bit. 12. And now I'm going to double up those browns. Uh, we have a conversion alignment over here too. But we are going to save it. Now we cast our weapon. And then, if we just get that chance to convert those browns work pretty nicely another cast in now we could explode the board maybe get some browns on the board yep that works brilliantly and we need one more cast or a skull poke I think that should do it yeah or uh, maybe switching to elementalist is going to be pretty okay idea later on and of course you could just bring the Empress in and swap Gimlet out of the board. But as I said, there is no starting explosion nor enchant. So these kind of things are going to really help with the mana generation right off the bat. So as we don't have to, uh, at this point, worry about survivability, I think Gimlet works pretty nicely uh, it, at these stages. Let's do that. Oh, I'm just leaving those extra drones on the board all the time. Actually, I think it was uh, that upgrade that created that extra turn for the AI. Um, if we take this, we will lose our turn, but yeah, we could just cleanse our Gorgotha. Another explosion. AoE cost. We double up the browns. Weapons up and touch a match. Now, hopefully, we have a boss over here. Drum roll. Yeah, baby. Alright, let's go fight against Saphirex. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I don't want to use mm, my lantern over here. Those rewards are trash for me. Let's use a normal torch. Almost messed up. Again, we have a Gimlet conversion. This is why I really, really, really like Gimlet over the Empress at these early stages. Let's explode the board. We got our Rock Troll up. And uh, we have only 8, so we aren't going to do that. Instead, I think we are going to take just this. So we can spam the board with Gorgotha. It would be pretty nice to get our weapon up. That should do it. And we also have to fight against submerged troops. So this is pretty nice. 
pretty nice example. We take that to get rid of that. Um, what is his name? Dark Troll. Yeah. Now I really don't want to die from a death mark. Do we have a gymlet alignment? We don't. But we are going to do the conversion anyways. I can cleanse my Gorgortha. Now we do a cast over there. Could we maybe double up those browns now? Nine, that's not very good. But we are going to do it anyway. We missed the extra turn. Let's explode the board. And uh, cast over there. Okay, now I'm thinking we really need to have that uh, Empress into the lineup. Maybe for the last three areas. Little bit stall here in the boss fight. Right. So maybe we do. Let's change. And slap Empress here. Now we do this, and this should do just fine. Right? And we fight against Forest Troll and Chimeras. Okie dokie. Now the mana generation is a little bit slow this way, but it is what it is. If you have a um, great Underspire team, please let me know in the comments. People very rarely post those um, Underspire teams in my comment section so maybe this is a great week to do that yeah um the empress speeds up the process a little bit it's nice to do a double damage versus doing multiple uh, basic spell damage right okay i think that's about this video and i start to prepare for my pvp video maybe i get that out in today as well the useful stuff, comment, like, subscribe, has this off. Peace.